Thank you. Thank you for the nice introduction and for the invitation to speak here. Um, yes, I'm going to be talking about coffee. Coffee in Colombia is some, somewhat cousin to nation branding as well because Colombia is known for many things, but uh, one of the things that we would like it to be known more is for uh, coffee and the many things, the positive things that are going on in Colombia. So, so just to, as a way of introduction, who are we? I work for the Colombian Coffee Growers Federation. The two persons that you see on the left are the previous and the current Juan Valdez. Juan Valdez is the symbol, the spokesperson of Colombian coffee growers. Uh, who are the Colombian coffee growers? They are organized under something that is called the Colombian Coffee Growers Federation. We have been around for over 80 years. There are over half a million coffee growers in Colombia. And we currently be, could be conceived as well as an NGO. We invest over $1 million a day in sustainability programs, in things that help the coffee grower, Colombian coffee growers' standard of living. I told you that there are over half a million coffee growers. They, they run very small plantations. Uh, almost 300,000 of them have less than one hectare in coffee. And uh, almost 95% of them have less, less than five. So, so the trick really is to get them to agree on common goals to agree on something so that they can do something that they wouldn't be able to do individually. And that's how, you know, the biggest secret that we have is really a way of forming those consensus among coffee growers. And that's what we have in National Coffee Growers Congress, in National Committee, a directive committee, and regional co coffee growers committees all around the country. So those consensus are brought from the ground up. Uh, as that's why we can invest in advertising, develop you know, programs, develop a, a number of initiatives that, uh, that allow us to compete in the, in the world marketplace. Okay, so that's as far as introduction. Why do we need to differentiate? Because coffee is perceived or, or uh, perceived to be a commodity. Well, looking at this graph, we'll sort of try to explain. In Colombia, we have a very different way of growing coffee than other countries, for instance, Brazil. To see how coffee, for instance, is harvested in northern Brazil. It's machine-driven, um, lower cost of production. I'm not comparing with Vietnam, which is another uh, coffee-producing country that has even lower cost of production than Brazil. Whereas we have to deal with high mountain slopes, we are in the Andes. We have to deal with different flowering and maturing uh, cycles, which allow, you know, forced us to pick only the mature cherries. And that's costly because that involves manual work. And it's not only on the harvesting, but that coffee needs to go through a number of selection and, and, and post-harvesting practices. Uh, so. You know, we have to deal with higher costs, but on the other hand, we produce better quality. So we needed to communicate that. And that's why we started, we started not only being proud of what we do, and this is a sample of coffee growers with Juan Valdez on it, but also needed to communicate that to consumers. We did that starting in 1960. Uh, in 1960, we started our first Colombian coffee campaign only 4% of consumers, the American consumers back then, recognized that Colombia produced coffee. They thought that coffee was really coming from somewhere else. And, um, and basically, the people to whom we sold our green coffee beans to, uh, the roasters, uh, were marketing consumers' blends, you know, breakfast blends, uh, French roast blends, whatever blend, but they wouldn't tell the origin of the coffee to consumers. Uh, and we had to make you know, the case that origin was relevant in the consumer choice. And um, so we, we started off in, in, uh, in a number of markets, primarily in the U.S., and we achieved decent awareness figures. You were talking about the, Enrique was talking about the awareness of Spain as a brand. 
Colombian coffee, uh, 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 in, in terms of awareness, has achieved throughout the years decent, decent percentages. This is a sample of countries. Uh, US, Canada, and Spain are way up. Uh, probably Asia is, is lower. But these, you know, th th these are very healthy numbers in general. Um, and how we did this? We created the character of Juan Valdez. We make sure that co consumers will demand Colombian coffee. We created the logo, a triangular shaped logo, uh, which is the Cafe de Colombia logo. We developed a greeting brand strategy in the 1980s. And we also you know, push for the creation of a segment that we w would call the 100% Colombian coffee segment. Uh, we'll see some numbers later on. Uh, I have a couple of spots that will sort of show you how does this process came along in terms of, of some ads. So if we could run a couple of ads, please, uh, I'll appreciate it. Colombian coffee can be quite surprising. Look for the symbol of Juan Valdez, the richest coffee in the world. So as I was telling you, we had, we had a, a successful campaign all the way through the 80s, through the 90s. But, uh, but at some point, the coffee category started to evolve. And we had to evolve with the, with the category. So we, had, we started from one brand. Uh, and uh, the coffee consumption occasions started to evolve as well. Uh, you don't see that evolution uh, as, uh, as a steep evolution, you, you could call it, as in, you know, in the Mediterranean countries here in Europe. But you can see it in Canada and the United States. In, in the UK, et cetera. So, so we had to develop new brands for these evolving consum consumer occasions. Uh, and coffee is different than cars. You, know, you, you purchase your car every three or four years, and you know, you feel that like you are a car consumer, that uh, you may be an Audi consumer. So you go for that sort of a segment in the market. In coffee, you have different consumption occasions throughout the day. So you could have an early breakfast uh, with coffee, and you need the energy of coffee at that point in time. You don't have the time for a social experience. You really need that energy. But at mid-morning or mid-afternoon or in the evening, you may have coffee with some emotional needs as well. So, so, so you, I mean, you need to be present in these different consumption occasions. And that's how sort of our uh, mantra is, how can we be present with a 100% Colombian coffee brand, a relevant brand for that particular consumption occasion? These are the possible consumption occasions. This is sort of brought out from the National Coffee Drinking Trends Study in the U.S. The different consumption occasions according to different um, segments and, um, and different price points. So we had to develop also a brand architecture to show how we would be there. And probably the biggest thing, the biggest uh, uh, noticeable thing, uh, uh, evolution in, in this architecture is the launch of our Juan Valdez Cafe, Juan Valdez Signature uh, Coffee Shop, uh, which has been there since uh, 2002. We currently have over 150 stores um, in a number of countries. To be able to provide that Colombian coffee experience in those particular occasions we would be uh, relevant, thinking that this will help the positioning of 100% Colombian coffee in general. 
since then, we have had, you know, we opened our first New York store in 2004. In 2005, uh, we also opened some, some stores in, in, in Washington, and in, in we are opening some stores in, in certain New York uh, American airports. And uh, as we go along, we had also developed some brand recognition in the press uh, and in, you could say, impressions uh, that have favored the brand and Colombian coffee in general. Uh, Advertising Age, for instance, chose Juan Valdez as the most popular American icon in advertising in 2005 that also sort of helped us create and reposition Colombian coffee. And, um, and that, in, 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 you know, in terms of measuring if we are doing it right or wrong, uh, I'd like to show you this graph. Uh, this is how we thought we would be, I mean, we had 10% of the grocery market with 100% Colombian coffee brands in, the, in, in North America and before we started. We are probably in, in 11% uh, instead of 14, but, but we have gotten a higher share of the higher price segment. Uh, in other words, we keep the same total share, but we are getting a higher share of, of, of the uh, coffee sold at over $5 price points in the U.S., which is, which is basically good news because if roasters are being able to sell Colombian coffee at higher prices, that means that they can afford to pay Colombian coffee growers higher prices. And this is what we have got in additional sales at higher prices in, since we started. I mean, we have come to over $100 million in additional coffee sales accumulated since, um, since we started. Now, how we, how, what's, what's the future? How we want to continue portraying this, this strategy? We are starting to use a lot more t technology to market the coffee. Uh, we are developing virtual trips to origin that you can download to the web and sort of go and have the, the coffee experience and know why that particular coffee is different. Uh, go and, and see a grower, if you will. And we have also with some tools, traceability tools, uh, bean track, uh, what we call bean track, uh, the ability to demonstrate to consumer which coffee, uh, what is that particular coffee coming from. Um, let's see how that works. In, in the case of the bean track, the packages do have a code, and that code, uh, if you can type it in the, on, the, on the website or you can type it on the store, will show you where the coffee comes from. It will provide you that ex emotional uh, experience in knowing what the, you're consuming is coming from. And, um, and that uh, has been, is in, is, in, in, is in test now in Colombia, but it's, it's coming up uh, to the different stores uh, all Colombian stores. So this sort of traceability uh, system, which has some, some, some technology involved, allows consumers to develop higher loyalty and be able to talk well about our coffee. Um, and taking hints from the wine industry, as probably most of you know, particularly talking about the Spain tourism, you go to Rioja and you sort of think when you come back that you are now an expert in Rioja wines and start talking to your friends and family how expert you are. We want that uh, sort of experience to be replicated with, with, uh, with coffee. And that's why we created those virtual tours that we are launching later on this year so that people can go to Colombia through the internet. We are moving from their home and learn with educational and entertaining um, videos uh, learn why this coffee is different so that they can tell family and friends as well. So basically in order to, to finish here is uh, our challenge is to continue making Colombian coffee origin relevant in different purchase decisions well, to consumers purchase decisions in different consumption occasions and uh, that's how we that's how we're doing it. Thank you so much.